Not surprisingly, Diane Babcock's family was pushing hard for a prison sentence. They did not believe Diane was some actress in a Shakespearean love tragedy. They did believe she was an unwilling participant who did not live to tell her side of the story. This is one of those uh, kind of cases where really you're the only person on the planet who knows the truth. Sure. Mr. Babcock was hoping that you would spend at least 10 years in prison. Uh, he was he quite understandably and naturally wanted to blame somebody for the death of his daughter, and there you were. Could you understand why he felt that way? No. I find their attitude almost appalling. This was not some crime uh, that you see on TV. This was two people in love, eloping, and an accident happened. In May 2007, after Yarrick had spent nine months in the county jail, the prosecutor cut a deal. He dropped the charge of negligent homicide, and Yarrick agreed to plead guilty to criminal mischief and criminal endangerment. The sentence, 10 years on each count, suspended, which meant he would not spend a single day of that sentence behind bars in Montana. The county attorney acknowledged that Diane's family didn't like the outcome, but Alas, what could he do? Their belief, if true, means that she was essentially kidnapped and murdered. Oh, yeah. And that is a terrible burden for a family to deal with over the loss of a child. And if I were dealing with a prosecutor who felt otherwise, I wouldn't be happy with him either. Dan's family declined our requests to take part in this report. And Sheriff DuPont is no longer with us. He died in 2012. But in his last years, he grew close to the Babcocks, and he spoke for them as much as for himself. It was a tragedy to that family. We, we could have executed Jerry Ambrose, and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have helped them. They needed to see some kind of justice done. They needed to see some, yeah, and they didn't. <laughs>